Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yeah, I know. It looks like I'm going crazy here. I got a Blickman Boilmaker G2. Oh wait, no. It's Blickman Brew Easy Compact All-in-One Brewing System. Yes. Yes, we're taking it to the next notch. Don't forget to like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate the sharing. I'm gonna go over this system from beginning to every nook and cranny and then to the end. And then we'll actually use it and compare it against the anvil and maybe some other systems down the road here shortly. But disclaimer, yes, Blickman sent me this to do a review on, but actually I'm gonna do a lot of videos on it. I've been showing it off to people, having them just look at it, not in, it's not even built, nothing. And I had one big reply from pretty much everyone. Wow. There are a lot of parts. What do you need all those parts for? What is everything for? So don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate the support. Yeah, Blickman was kind enough to send this out to me. They keep asking me what I'm brewing with it next and I haven't started brewing with it. I have really just kind of been going through every little bit, piece, part and understanding every bit, piece and part. Even though I've seen it many times, I've never seen it in real life and I've really had to fully grasp everything because there really are a lot of moving parts. So first, what we're gonna do in this video series, yes, I said it's gonna be a series. We're gonna go over basically, you decided that you wanted to get into home brewing or maybe you were doing some basic brew in a bag and you wanted to go deep dive in the deep end. I mean, I brewed all grain was the first I ever brewed and I think I brewed for five or six years before I even tried an extract. So I understand diving in the deep end. But the key here is you want a nice system, you want something with all the bells and whistles and you want something almost pretty much professional grade, but for a home brewer, but you don't have a lot of space. And yeah, Blickman Brew Easy Compact All-in-One Brewing System pretty much fits that bill. And you can do it in gas or electric. I always find the gas kind of cool, even though for me, gas was more about boil because I had problems with temperature control when I was trying to use gas and not boil. But they have a solution to that too. So you can do gas if you really want to, and have full control over that. So first of all, what do you get? I'm gonna tell you, you get a lot. You get a lot. I mean, I got that giant box you saw, and on top of that, between the G2 box, which had stuff in it beyond just the kettle, I had another giant box. Um, it was falling apart, but everything was boxed inside of that box and bagged up and nice. So luckily we got everything, but yeah, it was a little like, holy crap, I thought there might be a body in the box. It was that big. So <laughs> at least you feel good. You make a big purchase and you get all kinds of cool stuff and go, wow. But essentially you have a kettle, a basket. It's like a brew in a bag. And yes, those are the hooks for to hold it on. They're still inside. I have not put anything together other than basically playing with parts and checking things out to make sure everything was there. And all the accessories are basically based on the configuration you select. So it's not a one size fits all. It's more of a, hey, we're gonna go from a three tier system to an all in one system and allow you as many options as humanly possible. NPT, which allows you to screw things on, unscrew, makes it nice and simple. Um, no real tools necessary for most of that. Or tri-clamp, which I know a lot of people are into tri-clamp and they like the tri-clamp system. I don't really have a personal preference at this point in life, but both have their I guess, pros and cons and both have their benefits. I will say I do like the tri-clamp for ease of cleaning. It seems to be a little easier to deal with, but the NT MPT really isn't that hard either. I mean, like I said, it's, I like blue or black. I like red or yellow. It's really a personal preference at the end of the day. It is available with or without the following. You can get this in 120 or a 240 volt electrical setup. That includes the brew commander. And yes, with all this stuff, I forgot the brew commander. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yes, you can get the brew commander and it comes in three different flavors, 120 volt, 240 volt, or gas. Yeah, I know you're thinking, really? You can get this root the hellfire burner and a brew commander like this with a spark box and the spark box helps to control everything. But yeah, you can control gas with a brew commander. I mean, that's pretty freaking cool as far as, you know, 
I've never seen a digital electric system that controls gas, at least not for a home system. You know, if you're in professional, I've seen all kinds of furnaces with all kinds of control systems or ammonia systems for cooling, really. That's more of what I've dealt with. Um, but yeah, you can also get it without a controller. If you decide, you know, I'm good. I, I just like it hot and heavy and I can control my own temps, then great, you have that option. You save a little bit of money, but honestly, we're gonna be doing a video on that Brew Commander and that Brew Commander is really, really cool. Also, recirculation pump. I highly recommend, it's optional, but you can get the recirculation pump kit, which of course has the famous, and I do mean famous, and heavy, Riptide. This is the tri-clamp version. You can get the NPT version for your recirculation, but it just opens up so many other options. I mean, between recirculation, the other optional item, which is the Whirlpool kit, gonna need a pump for that, or when you wanna take the liquid and move it from one place to another for fermentation, boom, you get your pump again. I, I, come on, I, I wouldn't even consider the recirculation system optional. I'd say it's pretty much a must have in my book. So other, you have operational or option. <laughs> other, you have optional cooling systems. You can get a stainless steel coil. I'm not real thrilled with that, although they're really easy to clean compared to my jaded Scylla, which is copper, a little harder to clean, harder to make it look shiny. Or another famous piece of equipment from Blickman, Mm, and it is far from light. You could, you know, it also could come as an additional workout. I mean, this thing is a beast. You have your Therminator. There's a plate chiller. If you haven't seen a plate chiller, it's got copper sandwiched in. It's like a giant maze. For anybody who's never used a plate chiller, which includes me, but I've seen them taken apart and seen them in action. One side is your cool water. The other side is the hot wort. You run it low and slow, and if, you keep your cold water coming through at the right temps. Yes, in Florida, that might require a little bit of an ice bath to let the water go through. But the key here is that it allows for the heat transfer to the cool water, cooling your wart, and your wart should come out the other end cool enough. Sometimes you need to do a little recirculation with that just until you feel like the temps are just right. Not a problem. We have temperature control under control. But yeah, the Therminator. Therminator is almost as famous as the Riptide. I mean, every time I've ever seen anybody get a Riptide, it is like the Rolls Royce of vehicles. Not sure if that's a good analogy, but you know, you get it. You understand what I'm saying. The other item they have that's optional is a kettle cart. I kind of look at the kettle cart. It is expensive. It is stainless steel. And I did a little deep dive on the kettle cart because I was like, why is it so expensive? Got a few things. It was built to design. It's not just a little stainless steel cart. It's got a little I-beam underneath that helps to keep things. I say I-beam, it's more of an L-beam, but for support. It also has bolts and connectors, little L-brackets, so that you can take, if you decide to do the Hellfire, you can actually bolt it on for safety reasons. And if you decide you want to build out an entire, you know, three-piece system or whatever you want to do and you want multiple carts, they're interlocking. You can lock those little carts together. I kind of do wish they would come up a little higher, but you know, it is what it is. Not everybody's doing it on camera, so <laughs> it's what it is. Um, the casters do have locking casters, of course, but the multiple cart connecting thing was something new that I hadn't seen before, and that was really cool. Okay, let's go over the specs. First, boil maker, kettle, 10 gallons. Perfect for five gallon batches. Can you do a six? Sure. Can you get away with a little bit more? Yeah, probably. Be careful with boil overs. You know, your mileage may vary based on what you're doing. The grain basket, which is also got some serious weight to it. I mean, it's got stainless steel ribs all the way around, front, bottom, side, everywhere, pretty much. This thing can hold 18 pounds of grains. I haven't tested that, and I haven't tested to see how much more, because usually Blickman and Anvil, same company, will underspec certain things like that. They'll tell you it holds X when really it holds X plus Y. Um, better to, you know, under promise over deliver. So we'll see how much it holds, but 18 pounds is quite a bit. I mean, that's a high ABV, especially if you're shooting for a five gallon batch. So that's something to be aware of. I do like that over the Anvil. Anvil is 16 pounds. I just recently did six and a 16 and a third and probably could have got away with 17 pounds in the grain basket, but it did hurt my efficiencies. Blickman has gone over some things in this to help reduce efficiency problems and increase efficiencies, which is kind of cool. Um, direct, 
the direct deposit recirculation system, if I can say that, and that's what it's called. It's called a direct deposit recirculation system. I'm gonna open this, which has all the goodies, and see if I have that. Yes, yes, there it is. And no, I didn't look for it before I started the video, so I wasn't really sure. And this thing does come off for cleaning, but this little thing has tiny little holes all up and down it, and they're kind of opposite of each other every 90 degrees. What it's doing is as it's controlling the water, it's putting it at different levels throughout the grain bed. So that way it's, it's gonna create a tiny bit of channels. You can move some grains around a little bit to avoid that, but it's going to help keep the temperature constant on the mash throughout the entire grain bed. And on top of that, it's gonna kind of evenly, or at least try to evenly distribute that water so that you get the best efficiencies possible and don't lose out on some of those sugars or starches that are gonna be boiled into sugar after the fact. See if I can set that down without it falling down. <laughs> um, grain basket. I know I've seen a few questions out there. It's 400 micron. And I've been reading that on other people's posts about it, but yes, it's 400 micron. And you can use it as a hop basket too afterwards, which is kind of cool. I've seen, I believe it was Brian at Short Circuit Brewing. He used it as a hop basket. Definitely can be used as a hop basket if you don't want to use a hop spider or something separate. It is available. The entire system is available in NPT or tri-clamp design. So yes, you can have it either way, whatever you prefer, especially if you already have like a Riptide and let's say it's NPT, you'd probably want an NPT system and not go for the pump because you already have it. You could probably reach out to Blickman, find out what they'll sell you the individual parts for, but you know, you have options. It has a patented cool to touch linear flow valve. And that's on the front that you don't see because I haven't installed it. Told you it's gonna be a series. We've got a lot of parts to go over. There have been a lot of great videos out there from both Brian at Short Circuit Brewing and a lot of really, really good ones out at Blickman that you can go over. I was amazed there was one video and it was about the Riptide and they broke it down to every part, explained it, put it all back together. Great video. I'm gonna to try to cover that and many other parts, including ones that may not have been covered. We're gonna cover every individual part that's going to be installed on this. So some of these videos are gonna be very short, like the rotating dip tube. I don't think that's gonna be a long video, just saying. But I'm gonna cover everything. Now, yeah, everything. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, definitely appreciate it. Got questions, ask. I'm learning as I go on this right now because it is a beast of a system. Very, very nice quality, amazing, but there are a lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts.